Hello, friends. Welcome to something different, a quine video. Uh, we're going to do in Ruby a couple quines, and a quine is a self replicating program. Uh, it takes no input and produces a copy of its own source code. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that in just a second. Um, there's a couple of uh, rules, I guess you could say. You can't use a file read. You can't just read the file uh, of, that you're executing. That would be cheating. The fun comes in that you you want to try to uh, print out the, the source code of your program um, in a way that uh, doesn't uh, alter the the program. I, it's hard to explain. Yeah, I'll just get right into it and hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense. So I have my empty directory here and uh, the simplest and stupidest quine is just the empty quine where you just have an empty file, empty.rb, and if I cat that file, then it's it's empty. And if I run it, then I get no results. And this works in most programming languages where you just have an empty program and nothing actually happens. Uh, Obviously, no fun there, right? Like, what's the point? Um, but uh, I had to get that out of the way just because someone is going to bring it up if I don't. Uh, but yeah, that's one of them. And then there's the uh, evaluating quine. Uh, so we'll do eval.rb. And an evaluating quine is if you have a programming language that has eval, you can do some interesting things. And so if I have a string here and I'm going to say... Um, eval let's see how do i do this uh it's been it's been a while eval uh print s equals and then uh i think i want to print the string that's called s and then if i eval s what does that produce so let me get my side by side window here and if i uh let's see how can i do this if i run it through ENTR, and then I diff the results of, how do I do this? Catting the file, $0, and running the file, $0. Uh, and I wanna do it side by side. What does that look like? And if I save this file, I get a syntax error. So what what did I what did I get wrong here? Syntax error, unexpected end of input on line one. Oh, I did this wrong. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's try this again. So I don't want to eval that. I think I just want to print s equals. Does that get us close? Okay, so that gets us pretty close. The first line is the same, right? Uh, but I have this eval s here, and I can just do a trick with um, Ruby where I can just put the eval here. So it reads left to right, or sorry, right to left. So it's assigning to S and then it's evaluating it. And then I need to get the eval on back on the right side, which I guess is eval here. Is that right? Yes, there we go. Okay. So now we've got a one line evaluated quine where the left side is exactly the same as the right side and uh, there's no diff marker here so you can tell it's the same we can ignore this that's just the exit code so it's just this one line and that's an evaluated quine um i'll kind of explain a little bit what's going on here the the i guess i already explained that the evaluation you can assign in ruby you can assign uh, an argument uh, you can assign to a variable and then pass that as an argument to a, a method. And so that I think makes sense because you can probably read it like like this, except that wouldn't be the same. Uh, I would have to do something here. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's easier with optional parentheses in Ruby. And then the other trick in Ruby is this P method, which uh, if I... So if I have IRB and I see print foo, then it's going to print the string representation of foo. You can ignore this. And it's going to wrap it in quotes because it's a string. So that lets us cheat a little bit. So up here, if I didn't have that in Ruby, I'd have to do a puts s, which would be a little bit different. It wouldn't wrap this string in quotes. And so I'd have to do something like this which, uh, let's see, uh, something like that, which also wouldn't work because you can't, uh, in a quine, you can't really have escape sequences because they just don't come across right. So you'd have to do something like uh, get the, the uh, 
ASCII code for the double quote, which is 34. And then I could say 34 CHR plus S plus 34 CHR and do it that way. And then that would also match, but definitely easier if I just use the P method with S here. Um, a lot, a lot shorter and a lot simpler. So I'm sure we could code golf this. Uh, I bet people have, I know people have, uh, and got probably get this down to much something smaller. Uh, I'm not going to bother. I think this kind of gets the point across. This is the, the evaluated quine and, uh, it's a little bit of fun and it's kind of a brain bender to see how to make that work. And so that's, that's that. Uh, yeah, let's get out of this and let's go on to the third type of coins. So we did the empty one, we did the evaluated one, and then we're going to do the one that I think is the hardest, which is the constructive quine. And so we'll just do constructive RB. Okay. So a constructive quine, we're going to build up, um, I've seen it done a few ways, but but one of the ways is to build up an array of things and then print that array here. So uh, if I print um, S, uh, let's see, how can I do this? S each, we'll say line, and then we put that line like so. Uh, I could have an empty array up here. Let's save that and see what happens. There we go. Okay. So we got nothing on the right side and we got our source code on the left side. So we can put stuff inside of here that we want to print out. So we can put, um, S equals a square bracket, and then we can put our closing bracket here like so. And so there we go. We already got two lines matching this line and this line. Now we need to get these lines again. Uh, and <laughs> this is kind of where, where it gets a little weird. So if we, if we print a, the first line again, so we print S, why did I call this S? I don't remember. I mean, isn't it just A for array? I don't know. S something, A, who knows? Uh, let's print the first line and let's print the, um, last line. Does that get us pretty close? It does. Uh, problem here is that we're not printing it with the quotes and the comma. So you might think, well, we'll just do this, uh, right? We'll do this. We'll put an escaped quote in there, an escaped quote in there, and then a comma, and then a quote. Does that get us closer? does and then we got this indentation problem so let's fix that okay so we got the top one working and so with the constructive quine i guess you kind of work on the top part this array first and then you work on getting this uh to print uh that's kind of how i think about it and so we got our array working so i think if i put you know foo here doesn't it always match yeah so what i can put anything in this array now and it will always match on the right side so the source code will always match the output on the the right side and so now we just need to start putting these things inside of here you remember how earlier i said that you can't have escaped quotes so uh we're just going to go ahead and fix this right now because it's going to be a pain in the neck <laughs> if we don't because all these escape characters aren't going to print out right so uh, we can do that same trick where, what was it, 34? I don't actually remember if that's what it was. Um, we can do this plus 34 CHR. Let's just go see. 34 CHR is a quote. What is a comma? I don't remember. 44. So if I have 44 CHR, I'm going to get a comma. Uh, so I need the comma as well plus, uh, what was it? I forgot. 44 CHR. Uh, so if we print that, nothing should have changed except down here. And now I don't have any escaped quotes. So uh, I think we're good to go. So we can get rid of this foo. Let's put this inside of a inside of our array and see if we can get this arrow to go away. So if we do that, uh, no, it doesn't. Is it because I have this space here? Oh, it's because I need to print, I need to print it again, right? I need to print um, some of these again. I need to print not all of them. So, so this is index zero and this is index one. 
and this is index uh, negative one, right? The last one. So I guess we could do a1 through negative two. What does that get us? It gets us pretty close. Let's get rid of the space. Uh, let's just print it without the quotes. Okay, there we go. So now we got this one matching. And I think that means we can stick this one inside of the array now. And that gets this one matching. You see how earlier we fixed it. So this part, it doesn't matter what I put in here. It always matches. So now I can just focus on the bottom part. And so uh, we'll do the same thing here. And then last but not least, this one goes here. And there we go. We have our constructive quine. And it's not pretty, uh, but it works. And uh, it's kind of fun. I don't know. It's kind of kind of neat to build that up uh, piece by piece and have like a two-stage approach. Uh, just out of curiosity, if I did have a space here, that wouldn't work. But I could do... Um, hmm. Could I put an extra puts here? I could... And then I just need the puts here. I guess it adds a bunch, it adds several more lines, but now I can kind of see the the, the break here. Uh, that's pretty cool. Could we, could we do better though? Could we make this a little bit more uh, simpler? Could we get rid of this CHR stuff where we're having to turn an ASCII code and in, back into a character? Um, maybe, I think if we used a word array, let's go back to, to our IRB here. If I have... Um, percent w and i say foo bar baz buzz or whatever it's going to break that up based on spaces and it's going to give me an array back so foo and bar and baz buzz uh is its own thing because it just breaks on space so we could use that in ruby and we can make this a word array and we could get rid of all the quotes uh -huh. actually let's let me save this real quick uh this one works right uh, save as constructive two and let's um, okay so that works let me change this into a word array get rid of all of these quotes get rid of uh, get rid of all those quotes now, uh, I just need each line to have no spaces in it, right? So I can just, um, I think I can get away with doing something like this in Ruby. All, right, all these spaces are optional. This one as well. Uh, and then that's, that, I guess this down here needs to match, right? And here in a second, we'll get rid of those CHRs. Okay, how bad is it? It's pretty bad. Um, mostly, I'll get rid of that. Uh, mostly it's the quoting. So if we just do this without the CHR things, and I just do puts L, how close are we? Really close, really, really close. Uh, the each, I need to get rid of the space here and here. Ooh, look at that. Okay, uh, this needs to match. Okay, um, some reason I'm getting this twi three times. On the left, it's three times. Okay, that worked. I don't know. There was some weird glitch with my terminal output. Um, that works. Is there anything we can do to make it simpler? Um, I don't know. Probably. We could probably code golf this a little bit. Uh like, why am I doing these A zeros and, yeah, why am I even doing that? Oh, I don't think I need those, do I? Yes, I do have to have those. Yeah, I have to print the first line and the last line twice. That makes sense. And that means I have to have them up here as well. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. That's I, I'm not smart enough to make this smaller. Maybe you're seeing something that we could do. Um, I think that's it. That's all I want to do for this video. It's a little bit of fun. Uh, there's there's a lot to be learned here. This, this Wikipedia page has uh, a bunch more to it. 
It has some of the first quines and has some Python examples here that uh, honestly, um, if I don't go character by character, I'm not sure that uh, it's going to make a lot of sense to me. I guess this is string formatting. So these arguments, uh, no, these arguments get replaced into the string A uh, and then they're doing some sort of evaluation. Don't they have to be doing an evaluation? Maybe they're doing our same trick with CHR for the quotes uh, or prints or quotes, prints. Oh, single quotes. Yeah. Anyway, fun stuff. Uh, if you want to learn like the tricks of your language, I think quines are kind of cool for that. Uh, this is the one I did in Ruby. Uh, sorry, I didn't come up with it myself. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I could have if I had spent a little more time on it. Um, but yeah, definitely take out take a look at Quines. I think it's a lot of fun, and uh, I don't know. It, maybe it's a dinner party thing. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't bring this up at a dinner party. <laughs> uh, if you want to be a nerd, if you want to be a nerd, then you can. But uh, otherwise, I, I guess uh, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for hanging out. I hope to see you in another video.